Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, there's a brand new collection over at Spellbinders and I think you guys are going to get a kick out of it because it's super fun. It's by Becky Roberts and it's called Add to Carts. This is the 3D shopping cart. It creates a really fun 3D shopping cart and we're going to use this in one of our projects today. Um, there's multiple sizes that you can create with the shopping cart and I thought that was really neat. There is also a shopping bag that you can add to the cart to decorate it, um, or they look fun on their own. We're gonna create um, a few shopping bags here. Now this die set is called Shopping Cart Party On, and there's a bunting and masks and champagne and um, just a lot of fun elements that you can add to your shopping cart. There's even a little stiletto in there that I thought was adorable. We don't use it today, but it's super cute. Um, Becky Roberts also has a stamp set. It's called the Shopping Bag Sentiments, and it's perfect for stamping on your shopping bags and perfect sentiments for your 3D shopping cart. So fun collection. There's more to the collection and I'll list the entire collection over, um, that's over at Spellbinders down below if you want to check it out. But let's jump in. We're going to start off by making some shopping bags. Very easy to do and there's two different sizes. There's a small one and a large and then you get two kind of shapes of handles. You um, There's a square shape and then an, a rounded shape. I'm going to use some colored cardstock. The cardstock that I'm using is Spellbinders Color Essentials. Um, it's pretty thick stuff. So for my white bag, I wanted to use a thinner sheet. So this is um, just, I would say maybe 80 pound cardstock. We're going to make a white bag with that. This is the Peridot um, cardstock and it's very thick. We're going to make a bag with that along with the four colors right below the Peridot. The pink is pink sand. If you guys are familiar with Spellbinders Color Essential cardstocks, I'll just tell you the colors. The, um, the teal is teal topaz, the lighter teal is waterfall, and then the red is poppy field. Just in case you guys want to check it out. And I'll list these below too. Now I went ahead and die cut everything out. There's even a little tag in the shopping cart. I thought it was so cute. Um, I'm going to be using some plaid pattern paper. This is just from one of the Spellbinders um, paper pads from the card kits. I don't know if they have this separately. This is the Celebrate Spring paper pad, but I'm going to die cut out um, a few tags with this. I'm not sure if we'll use them in our projects, but I wanted the option. And I like that pattern paper. We're going to embellish one of our bags with it too. Okay, first what we're going to do is stamp some of the sentiments using Versamark ink on the colored cardstock. There are some circles in here that you can stamp on the bags. Um, I like the sale and the super sale. I thought that was so cute. So I stamped both of those and I went for a tone on tone but it's not very vivid. So I'm going to, I'm going to, and I didn't center them too well either. So I'm going to go ahead and change this up later on. But we'll put these aside and let's start off with adding our handles. Again, there's two different sizes of handles. Um, the large one will fit the large bag, small ones will fit the small bag, and there's two different styles. So you have a, like a rope kind of a style, and then you have a like the paper rectangle kind of style. To add your handle, it's very easy. Um, I added glue just above the dots on the bag. I kind of put the very end of the handle inside the holes of the bag and then um, glue down the handle part to the cardstock. Very easy. I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I cut um, some of my handles are with a silver mirror cardstock and some of them are die cut out with white cardstock. I thought we'd do a little bit of mixing and matching. <laughs> now you'll notice that to create bags you'll need to die cut out two of each but the color ones that I'm adding handles to right now um, I only deck it out one. I'm going to show you a different way that you could create with it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create my little tags. I went ahead and die cut out some white tags and then some of the um, the plaid pattern paper and then threaded some of the licorice twist twine through it. And I'm not sure if I'm happy with that, so we'll see. <laughs> First, we're going to go ahead and take our largest bag, which is with the very thin cardstock. 
I suggest if you want to guess it in your bag to use a thinner weight cardstock. Um, to create a guess it, it's very easy. There's score marks on the very end where that tab is on the bottom. And basically you're going to do a zigzag fold, kind of creating an M shape. So you'll fold on the back side once, fold again on the reverse side, and then fold back into the back side of the, the, um, the shopping bag. You'll see here in a minute my little shape. It's kind of hard to... to First of all, I'm not on camera, <laughs> but um, once you see the shape of it, you'll understand. You're going to do it like a zigzag fold. If, um, this is thinner weight, and it was easier to fold at the score line with the thinner weight. I'm going to show you my... Basically, you're creating like an M shape. Let me just fix this here so you can see it. So there's that flap on the bottom. You have three score marks, and then you can see it creates kind of an M shape. So that's what you want. And you can reinforce that score line with the, the tab too. I'm going to do the exact same thing with our next, um, our back shopping bag piece. I'll just reinforce that score line. So we're scoring um, over to the back side of the bag. And then after we have the back side done, we're going to flip it back around and score again. There is a V shape at the very bottom, so when I score um, or use my bone folder, I don't go all the way down to the bottom because I want to keep that. That helps with the gusset. It kind of creates, um, after you do the M fold, it kind of creates its own gusset, so you really don't have to score at that those V score lines. Okay, I just reinforced all of those. Sometimes it's nice to go back and forth just to kind of work that paper, break down those fibers. But you see the M there? So this is basically ready to go. Fold up that tab here. Now there's a fold line on the very bottom. You want to fold that up. And I'll do the same thing to our other one. Now all you have to do is put both of these together. To do it, you just need your glue or I'm going to be using score tape because it's thin enough to go along the left and right. You want to add adhesive to the left of your bag and then you'll add the bag on top of it. I'm holding my um, my cardstock flat when I add it to the score line. It just makes it easier. And then I'll just flip it over and I'm going to add another piece of tape to the very end of the score mark fold over the other piece of the bag and it should line right up and, you, and I'll show you how it's flat when you do this. I'm not worried about the back just yet. Now to create the bottom, it's very easy. I have um, score tape on just one of those flaps, not the, the smaller ones on the left and right on the um, one of the bottom ones. Okay, so you want to fold that in and then take your flap that doesn't have adhesive and fold it over the top and you have a perfect bag. Now this again has a gusset so you could fold it, reinforce that gusset and it really does look like a shopping bag guys. It's so cute. <laughs> so that is with a gusset. Now with the heavier cardstock, um, to create that gusset I think it'd be a little bit harder. Um, Spellbinders Color Essential Cardstock is a heavy weight. So you don't necessarily even have to put a gusset in there if you don't want it. So with my smaller bag, I'm not. There, um, I'm skipping a score line basically. So I'll score the first score mark and then I'll skip that um, middle one and then I'll score again. This way we're creating a U shape. And you also want to score the bottom of course. And we'll flip up that tab and then this one's ready to go. So for this one, we're just skipping that gusset. Again, we're going to fold over at the first score mark and then reinforce the score line. So I did the same thing to the second piece. Now you want to add adhesive again to the end of the tabs. You'll just remove the release paper and then you just line up the edge that doesn't have any um, tape or glue secure that. You can lay it flat now. If you lay it flat, um, you can just remove the release paper off of 
this little tab, fold it over of course, and then you can just fold over, um, fold it in half like a magazine or like a book, and it should line up perfectly. And it's easier to reinforce that tape if it's flat too. I like to go back and forth. This way I'm kind of breaking the fibers and it's, it creates more of a boxy shape. Now it kind of looks like a cereal box now. We're going to close the lid of the cereal box. Just fold in the two smaller tabs on the left and right. This time I left the release paper on so you could see. Then you fold in the piece that has your tape or your glue and then fold over the, the piece that doesn't have any. And then you have a cute little box, a cute little shopping bag. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? <laughs> I just think it's adorable. Okay, so my, my, my large and small is done. Um, I do have some white tissue paper that we're gonna put in here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate my largest bag. I'm gonna use some of that plaid paper. I'm gonna add glue to the front. Now, of course, you could do this um, prior to constructing your bag. It probably would be easier, but this works out well too. I'm just gonna glue down a piece to the very front. And again, if you were to do it while the, the pieces are just die cut, you could actually go along the entire edge. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my poppy field. I have a very thin strip. I'm gonna put this over the seam of my pattern paper and, and then this bag is good to go. Cute little shopping bags. We'll line it up to the edge to the edge and I'll use my scissors and just trim off the excess. <laughs> I just think this is so fun. Oh my goodness. This is like paper dolls. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. We're going to grab some of our little tissue paper and I just um, trim down some small strips. I like to crinkle it from the middle, kind of halfing it and then we can just fill our little bag. And I think it's so fun. <laughs> when that looks, that just could look so fun on the card. I thought about adding some of that black and white Baker's twine, and I thought we'll just hold off on decorating them. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add some tissue to our little peridot or peri. I don't know if it's peridot or peridot, but our peridot bag. I have my fan on, so you can actually see the tissue paper kind of flying away. <laughs> <laughs> but that is um, our large and small. Now with these, since we only, oops, we lost the handle. I got to glue that back on. But since we only die cut out one, um, I'm going to layer them all together at the bottom of one of my cards. So I don't need the bulk of the 3D bag. I just need the bag. So I'm trimming off the left and the bottom of our little bags here. So we'll just trim off the bottom, just trim at the score mark. And then your bag is a flat bag. So if you want to layer these, you could do that. Um, you have this option also. If you want to add a tag, you just thread it through the handle portion. And once we have our little tag, I'm not necessarily going to use this tag, but I did want to show you how you would connect it. I just add a piece of foam tape behind it. To secure the string behind it and then you have a little tag hanging down isn't that so cute now you can also take one of your tissue papers you probably want a smaller smaller piece so i'm going to half this one and just kind of fold it so all the points are at the very top and then you can put this right behind i'm going to stick it stick it underneath my foam adhesive here and then you have some tissue coming out of the bag and then um it's layerable, which makes it nice. I'm going to continue on and just add tissue to all of my bags. Um, and again, I decided not to use my tag. So we're going to, um, not for this card anyway. So we're going to, I just took that, I just pulled the string out. So we're not going to use it. Now, remember I stamp with Versamark uh, my little sale sign. I love the little, um, the sale and the shopping bag sentiments but I wanted them to be a little bolder and more centered. So I stamped them. I went through all of my Distress Oxide inks and I stamped each one of the cell and the super cells with some coordinating colors. Now, the only one I couldn't match very well was my uh, waterfall 
Um, oh, you know what? Tumbled glass probably would have been really good for that. But I use speckled egg. Speckled egg, worn lipstick, twisted citron, and festive berries. Those are actually the same colors that I'm using to add a little bit of color for my background. So I have a panel that measures a card front size. We're going to make a landscapes card for our very first card. So I'm just taking those same colors and adding little highlights of color almost down the middle of my panel. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. I went ahead and used a circle die and die cut out all of my little sail sentiments. And, I, and all these colors too, um, with the exception of the speckled egg, are um, over at Spellbinders now for the Distress Oxide inks. So that makes it nice. It color coordinates with the cardstock pretty well, you can see here. Now I'm adding all of my sails, popping them up with some foam adhesive to each one of my little shopping bags. And I'm just loving the way this looks. <laughs> it's so cute. For my sentiment, I had to bring in the Misty. Um, I'm stamping the sentiment with a gray ink and I stamped the one that says because I bought it on sale I actually made money. I think that is so fun. I think it's so cute. Kind of gives us a reason to do a little shopping <laughs> to add to our cart, right? Okay, I stamped that in the upper right corner. Now all I'm going to do is um, I have foam tape behind each of my bags. I'm going to go ahead and remove the release paper and put the bag with the coordinating color and kind of placing them wonky overlapping each one of these so they all fit on this panel. There's going to be a few that overhang and that's okay. We can trim those off with the scissors. We're going to add our, our pink sand here and then we'll add our waterfall and last we'll add our, our poppy field. Isn't that the cutest? And it didn't take no time at all. I'm going to trim off the excess and then all we have to do is add this to our card base, which is a standard A2 size card base, and it's going to cover the complete front. And I did forget to mention that I used one of my Fun Stampers Journey Border dies. This is from the Border Essentials. I'm, I added the um, like pinking sheer edge to the very top of this panel, just for a little something. I die cut it out with white cardstock. Now we're going to bring in um, a few of my crystal gems and that finishes card one. <laughs> now we're jumping into card two. We're going to use our shopping cart party on die set and create lots of embellishments. I have the banner and then that piece there has all the, the bells and whistles for our champagne bottle. Um, the one on the very bottom is the fancy piece for our little masquerade mask. I'm going to die cut out my my wine or my champagne bottle with my peridot color. I'm going to die cut out the champagne piece itself with my pink sand. Take our little masquerade mask, die cut that out with our poppy field cardstock. This little piece um, has the little bunting um, triangles that you can you can add to your your little banner. So I'm going to cut that out with a whole bunch of different colors. I also thought it'd be fun to die cut out the champagne glass with vellum. So everything's die cut. I even die cut out um, all those colors with the balloon die that was in that set. But we're not going to use them for this card. We're going to save it for our last card. But that is our little feathery piece that goes on our masquerade mask or a Mardi Gras mask or a celebration mask. Um, I die cut out that piece with silver mirror cardstock and um, I think it looks super fun. It, uh, the silver mirror cardstock die cuts so, so well, but it does take a little time to dry. So you want to make sure it dries because your little elements will shift. Now the banner is so cute. It has little bows on the end. Um, we're going to fill that in, in a minute. We're going to add our champagne first. I just added a little bit of glue and then we we're going to add our champagne. It has little bubbles in there, guys. It's so cute. Okay, there's our champagne glass. Next, we're going to go ahead and add little dots of glue on each one of these little triangles. And then we're going to fill those triangles in with the same colors. And we'll add our pink. And then we'll add our green. 
and I'm gonna actually do a couple more of these and I'm gonna do another champagne uh, glass and another masquerade mask for the champagne bottle so easy to create but to give it a little dimension since I have my blending brushes on my desk um, I'm just using the leftover ink this is from the uh, peacock feathers I just went on one side of the bottle and added a little bit of shading and it really does give dimension guys okay for the top of the bottle we're going to use the silver mirror cardstock I did cut out the the bells and whistles for this bottle with graphite which is the dark gray and also with um, the silver mirror because I did want to have a silver top here the rest is graphite but that is the cutest little ball ever. <laughs> okay, so all of our little um, party on elements are good to go. And I did, like I said, um, die cut out a few extras. So let's go ahead and create our background. I have some, um, this is waterfall cardstock. I'm going to run this panel through my embossing folder here. And then we're going to add that pinking edge to the left. This embossing folder, I don't know if it's available right now at Spellbinders. I think it's called Sunburst or Starburst. Um, if it is, I'll list it, of course. But I just adhered that, that pinking edge to the left. We're going to adhere this panel to our card base. The panel size is three and three quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge on that right side. I'm going to have to trim off the excess here. We're going to make a celebrate card. In this uh, sentiment stamp set, there is happy birthday. There is it's a, an add to cart kind of day. I think we've all had those kind of days. <laughs> Girls night out. Um, I think that, that goes perfect with that little stiletto that's in the die set. But I added the bunting to the top left corner. I'm using my bag kind of as a spacing. We're going to use our large white bag that we created. I'm going to add another one kind of overlapping them and then my third one I'm going to put on the bottom left corner. I'm going to go ahead and add my champagne bottle to my bag and I put the little masquerade masks on the inside of the bag with the tissue paper and then I went ahead and die cut out one more champagne uh, glass. We're going to crisscross them and put them on the bottom of the bag here and I think that looks so fun. <laughs> For my sentiment, I went ahead and stamped the word celebrate on some of that graphite gray cardstock and then heat embossed it with white embossing powder. I just blocked it off with my scissors. I went ahead and adhered that to my little bag and that finishes off. Oh no, you know what? I'm using my gems. This is the crystal mix. The smallest one will fit perfectly. All these small gems will fit perfectly in the champagne glass. So it looks like little bubbles. I think it turned out so cute. So that's card number two. <laughs> now we get to make the fun shopping cart. Now the shopping cart I was super excited about because it's so easy to make, guys. And this would make a cute little Christmas ornament too. And there's different sizes. Um, you have the skinnier one will fit one of the shopping bags but if you want to double up on the shopping bags you would use the larger one so um, we're going to use just the skinny the the single bag size um, so you'll want this piece and you'll also want one of the top pieces the other one is for the larger bag so those are the pieces you need i'm going to bring in some thinner card stock that's white we're going to die cut out one of the skateboard looking pieces and then two of these. These are the sides of our shopping cart. It's a 3D one and you're going to have, some, you're going to just love the way it turns out. Okay, once everything's die cut, this is our little skateboard piece. You just, basically you're going to create a rectangle with it by reinforcing the score lines on the left and right and then the top and bottom. So those all go in to create a little rectangle here. Now all those little tabs, we're going to go ahead and add glue to eventually. These little pieces, there's score marks on here. For the front of the cart, you're going to want to do a couple snips, snip at the score lines, and then 
we'll take those and we're going to need to um, reinforce those score lines. There's two score lines. So you're going to create basically a U shape with each one of these. This little piece is going to go on the very front of the cart. You'll see the little, it looks like a little staple almost when you get done. There we go. You see the staple shape? <laughs> and then we're going to do the same thing to our larger piece. This one has a little bit of an angle on one side. The shopping cart on the very top has an angle. So that angle is going to go on the very top. And again, if you want to use your bone folder, I think it just makes for a nicer edge versus not using it. Okay, my shopping cart, I did die cut out two of those. Um, and that those colors, I used the poppy field. Now we're going to grab some score tape. I'm going to go ahead and you're going to basically layer them like this. So we're going to add some score tape to the very um, inside lines of the shopping cart here. There's enough room for score tape, or if you guys want to use glue, go for it. Sometimes tape is just quicker adhesion. We're going to remove the release paper and then we're going to add those staples, the staple shapes to our shopping cart. Um, this one is going to go, this is the longer one. Remember you have that angle. You're going to adhere it just along the edge. It might be easier if I flip it around here and, and put it right up to that score mark. And that was easier. And then you can hold it flat to reinforce it. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. This one I'm gonna hold flat. This way I can press down and the, I know the glue's adhered. And you can see the edge of your cart too, so it makes it easier to line up. So hold it flat and then you can you can plump them up once, once it's adhered. <laughs> okay, we're gonna open them back up. And now these, we're going to add glue to all of the tabs. So the top and the bottom and the left and the right. You can add a generous amount. And now the bottom two tabs, you're going to connect to the very bottom um, on the inside of those white pieces that we just adhered. Now I'm using white only because I think it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, but if you want to use the same color as your shopping cart for this, I think it would look nicer. Um, to me, it's it's once it's finished, it's not that big of a deal. Um, if you're gonna make a, an ornament, I think it would be a big deal, but just press down. So they're connected there on the bottom. Now, all you have to do is connect those tabs on the top to the top of that U-shape or the staple piece. Just hold it down so that glue connects. Glue takes a little longer to dry. But once it connects, you can see the shape that we have. Okay, pretty easy. I mean, it, it, it didn't take no time at all and I think it's adorable. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some tape to the left and right of our bottom piece. We'll just remove the release, the release paper here, or it could be our top piece. And then this is going to go right on top. And your shopping cart is basically done. And you guys can fill this with sky's the limit. I just think it's the cutest. You could literally wrap some cute little earrings or something and put it in there. <laughs> now for the bottom of the cart, I went ahead and die cut out three with white cardstock and one with silver mirror. I'm going to add adhesive to the white cardstock ones and layer them together. This is going to give the bottom of my shopping cart a little bit of stability and it's also going to help me with the wheels. When you die cut out the wheels, you have a donut shape and then you have the inside hubcap piece. What I like to do is take your donut wheel piece. I die cut that out with graphite cardstock. And I also die cut it out once with a silver mirror because we want the silver hubcap. But I'm basically taking the donut piece, the tire, and putting it so those little wheel pieces are right in the middle. 
this way I can add dots of glue right on top and then add my silver mirror cardstock right over it. It's going to sandwich those wheels together and it's going to keep it in one place. And it's also going to give me a place to put the hubcaps. So I added just a dot of glue right at the very bottom of those wheel pieces. And then I want to add my silver hubcap. When you, again, when you um, glue the silver mirror cardstock, it does take a little bit of time to dry. But once it dries, it dries pretty good. So you have a little bit of time to position them. And there are your cute little wheels. <laughs> Isn't that just adorable? And we have it, it's nice and thick, like a chipboard. So it's going to give it stability. For our shopping cart handle, there is a little die piece in there that I die cut out. Um, the bumper piece of the cart and also the handle. And I die cut that out with a graphite cardstock. We're going to add our handle and you can go with any color guys and then we'll take our little bumper piece and add this to the front of the cart i am so glad carts have those trust me i am i've bumped so many things i think i'm um a lot of times people will bump car doors you know when you're in shopping centers um, i've never did that but i sure bumped the heck out of those carts <laughs> so thank goodness for bumpers Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the very top so we can add our wheels. And our shopping part is done. Isn't that so cute, guys? And then your bag will fit right in it. I'm not even gonna glue my bag down in it. I want it to be removable, because I think it's so fun. But I just think that's adorable. And sky's the limit. If you wanna make a silver card shopping cart, a gold shopping cart, sky's the limit with the colors. Now for my balloons, I went ahead and added strings. I just trimmed down some very, very thin strips of the graphite cardstock. Um, I'm taking a panel and I'm trimming it to four and a quarter inches by, no, four inches by five and a quarter. So we're, I just trimmed off a quarter. Next we're going to, since I have those brushes on my desk, I'm just going to add a little color to my background using those same Distress Oxide inks. I have Twisted Citron and, and Peacock Feathers, and then I have Pink is Worn Lipstick. Just three of them for this card, and I kind of went a little bit to the right. That's where we're going to have our balloons. I'm going to, for my panel, I'm putting the shopping cart edge right along the left side. This way I can stamp my sentiment on the lower right. I'm going to make a happy birthday card, so we're going to stamp that. And I just use my black ink for this. Next, we're going to flip over our cart. I'm going to add some glue. There's room on the left and the right of it. And on the wheels here. And we'll just tack this down. But you can see how cute that would be as a holiday ornament. I just think that'd be cute hanging on a tree. <laughs> okay. Looks so fun. Since I have a little bit of bulk here, I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive to my card base. All of my card bases are A2 size, guys. Okay, now we're going to add our balloons. I'm just going to remove the release paper. And we're going to have the balloons just coming out of our shopping cart here. I'm going to decorate the balloons a little bit. I'm adding little black bows to the very bottom of them with my black marker. Then I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some highlights with my um, white gel pen. Just adding like a reverse C just makes it look a little bit more dimensional. Okay, I did decide to add a tag to this shopping bag. Um, I did not, I took off the pattern paper. I didn't, instead of putting a pattern paper on the tag, I ended up cutting out a couple squares and I put them on the inside of my shopping bag just for a little added color and then tied a bow with my little tag here. Okay, I have some of those, that Crystal Mix Color Essential Gems, but I decided since this is a birthday card, maybe we'll bring in some stars. I'm gonna add one to the tag and it just embellish um, the card with a couple more stars. They're, they're in coordinating colors. And I just think that sets it off. So that is my happy birthday card <laughs> with a 3D shopping cart. We're gonna take a look at all the cards that I made today. And it's so cute that it just comes in and out. Again, if you want it um, bigger or thicker, 
um, you would double up so you could add a couple more uh, shopping bags to that cart. And I like that there's options for that to make it a little bit wider. But I hope you enjoyed my project. If you guys want to visit um, Becky Roberts' entire collection, I'll leave the link down below. I think you're going to kick out of it. It's so unique and so fun. And um, I had so much fun creating with it. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a fabulous day. And we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.